And I, I don't know if I would be able to go back and, and sit in the classroom right away. It'd take a little bit of time, obviously, yeah. to get a little more respect back to the teacher. But, but you know, that's, I talk to my friends all the time, the friends who went with me to Ireland. Some of them are teachers, and, and they, uh, they you know, spend their day in their classrooms. And I like to hear their stories. I kind of get jealous of it, of, of not having my own classroom. So um, wow. I'm sure that I would, I'm sure that I would uh, incorporate music somehow into what I was doing, and even if it, even if it's just meant, you know, singing locally um, wherever I was, or or occasionally singing um, something. But I, but I would really not have any problem. I would actually enjoy going back and teaching. You know, that's so funny. A rock star is hanging out with teachers, and the rock star likes to hear their stories. That is, yeah. you know, you'd think yeah. it would be the other way around. Yeah. I don't think they like hearing his, but hey. Well, you know, the friends, my best friends are the people who don't care. I mean, literally, they, they don't. They don't ask about it because it's, it's just like, well, he's got a different job now. So. I heard a, I heard a celebrity say once, I can't remember who it was, but he said, um, he said, I've never cared much for the, uh, for the, oh, how did he put it, adulation from complete strangers. He said, if they, if they don't, uh, he said, I, I care what my friends think and what my family thinks. Right, 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 right. But the adulation of complete strangers has never been that big of an attraction to me. It, well, you know, I, I think that that's, I think that, the appreciation, I guess, I don't, I don't want to use the word adulation, but the pre appreciation and, the, and the, the support I get from strangers yeah. is really, it, it is important to me. I think I would have to, I don't know if I disagree, I think that that's really amazing to me that I can go out on stage every night and I can see people I don't even know. And they're calling in and requesting the songs and they're going out and buying the albums and, and they're supporting the foundation that, you know, I, yeah. that's so important to me. That is amazing to me. My friends, I, I really appreciate, because I, I, go out, I go out on the street all the time and, and Strangers will come up and want to take a picture and an autograph, and that, that's great, and it means a lot. But when I go home, I kind of like to not have to do that. Right. You know, I like the, the break. So, so my best friends are the ones who I just talk about, and they tell me how bad their day was, and, and they, you know, you know, don't really want to know about my show. I mean, right. they come to see it because they're supportive, but they don't really want to know about work. So that's a little different. It's kind of a break to me. And so those friends of mine who, or those people who I, who I knew back in, in Raleigh, who we're friends, but all they want to do is can I get free tickets to the show or show? Oh, I love your right. city, blah blah blah. And they have my picture as their, you know, their their buddy icon on, on yeah. <laughs> AOL. You know that. <laughs> those are the ones who I'm kind of like, oh, you know. Well, that, that's what's wrong with that statement though that this celebrity made because yes, they are strangers to you, but you're no stranger to them. Right. Yeah. And clearly, there's, I don't think there's anything more dangerous than a teen girl and her mother doing anything possible to meet their idol. <laughs> uh, what is the most over-the-top thing that a fan has done to meet you? I just found this out last night. We were in Houston, Texas, and uh, I had a, um, a lady in the audience who, well, it's, it's kind of a two-fold story. I had a lady in the audience who had a sign-up that said, Clay, I ate cat food to meet you, but lost. Oh. She had gone to a radio station and eaten cat food. Oh. Oh. Well, the lady who won, I had met earlier, she had actually who, she actually got backstage, and she had washed her hair in cow manure. Oh. Oh. And that's supposed to impress you? Well, it actually kind of smelled. She hadn't cleaned it out yet. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> one of the most outrageous things you do to meet Clay kind of contest, right? Yeah, it was. So what, and I, they were actually, while we were on the Idol tour, a lady had actually tattooed her my name into her into the small of her back. And, and like with a real oh, really? Yeah. really? Yeah. And see, that would frighten me. That wouldn't impress me. It would frighten yeah. me. Well, uh, you know, it, you have to take it, you know, take the good and the bad. Yeah. And stuff. So, I mean, yeah, it's a little bit like, whoa, that's not coming off. You know that? <laughs> that's a real tattoo. And so that makes you go, whoa, wow. But, I mean, to do something like that so they can meet me, that just still baffles me. I mean, two years ago. Do you know how embarrassed I am about that new kids on the block tattoo on my back? I can't get rid of it now. <laughs> oh, see, that was retro. You're cool now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. It's great. You have a great laugh, especially when you're loopy and tired. I'm sure you're going to play it over and over. Oh, you know we will. Oh, oh yeah. Of course we will. <laughs> Let's replace that one. That one. <laughs> Have a terrific show tonight, and I will have a stern talk with our program director and see what's going on with the songs. Right? Yes. Okay, sounds good. All right, Clay, thank you so much. Hit, thank you guys. Hit the hay. Okay. Clay Aiken.
Chris Lee doesn't have a great voice. He's got an awesome voice. Who talks to Yeah, he seems like a really nice guy. Yeah. Okay, so there's our Clay Aiken on the show with Kid Craddock in the morning. Not bad at all. How about that? No confusion at all. We wanted to have you on, and here you are. What's the latest uh, going on? Give us a quick synopsis of what's happening with you. Well, we're, we're finishing up a tour. We're actually, uh, I think we have nine shows left after this. Okay. Ooh, nine more. That's yeah. a, then it's over. Then what? Yeah. Then we're. Then I'm going to take a little bit of time off. I'm going to go home. My brother's been in Marine boot camp all summer long. Wow. And he uh, graduates tomorrow. Oh, wow. So he's going to be home for a little bit. So I'll take some time and go home. And then. Um, I have a book coming out in November, and then a Christmas Shut album up. also in November. Shut up. You got a book? book. What, what, what kind of book? Well, it's a one with pages and words. Yeah. And we, <laughs> it's more of a it's kind of a memoir. Of, you know, it's a thank you to some people who helped me become who I am and and get to this point in my life. And That's cool. Kind of some stories of how, you know what I've learned from individual situations. It's been such a metamorphosis. Well said. To see you, I mean, involved. It's like a, a totally different person. You're, I mean, you got to a totally different person. His personality stayed the same. He's gone from nerd to really cool guy, man. Oh no, I haven't. I haven't changed that either. <laughs> With all due respect, I don't think he's become cool guy at all. <laughs> no, they put some gel in his hair. Yeah. But beyond that, I think he's just the same guy that auditioned on that day. Hmm. I'm definitely still a dork. That's for sure. Well, I mean, just a richer one. Hey, dorks of the world unite. <laughs> yeah. I mean, who's running all the companies? And who, you know, it's all dorks. Where's well, our radio show? Dorks. <laughs> dorks. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> so when you finally get off the road, is there a particular spot in the world that you'd like oh. to go to relax? You know, I went to Ireland this summer for, for my, a vacation, but uh, I'm not. A, I mean, look how pale I am. I'm really pretty pasty. I don't tan or anything. So if I go to a yeah. destination, I come back looking like a crazy. Yeah, you and Kelly Raspberry yeah, would be great travel mates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I can't go. I can't really go. My friends, I, I try to take some friends with me to Ireland, and um, I think they want to go to some place tropical next year, so I might have to give it a shot, but I'll be covered in sunscreen and wearing and you go ahead, and, everything you you go ahead and front the bill when you call your homies and ask them to go to Ireland? Uh, you know, I have. Yeah, I did. Yeah. But that's cool of you. Well, I want people to go with me, so. Well, that's the thing. You get to a point where you're like, okay, I'm really rich, and none of you are, so <laughs> bye. Go. Yeah. Yeah. You want to go to Rio this summer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you picking up the tab? <laughs> <laughs> we only have a couple minutes with you, and we're going to let you go to bed, but uh, you've got to do something for us. Okay. About six months ago, we talked to a guy on the phone. He just called into the show, and he sounded exactly like you. Now, he didn't know it until I told him that he sounded just like you. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we prank called another radio station and said, how would you like to interview Clay Aiken? Buddy of ours up in Atlanta. Yeah, he's a good friend. So we weren't being mean or anything. Okay. He used to work on our show, so, actually. So uh, they talked to the guy and everything, and they were very suspicious, and they wouldn't put him on. Well, like you guys today, you didn't think it was me. Right. We thought so, they might be pranking us back, yeah. Clay. That's why. So what I'd like to do, Clay, is call them right now with the actual Clay Aiken on the phone and see if they'll believe us. Okay? <laughs> okay. Right, we can try that. Stay with us. <laughs> do you want him to do all the talking or are you uh, No, I'll, I'll say. Hey, hey, Phil. Yeah. Hey, it's Kid. How are you? It was well. Hey, I got uh, Clay Aiken on the line. Oh, I bet you do. <laughs> Clay, say hi. Hey, how are you? I right, hang on a second for me. I'm going to talk to Jeff today. Oh, no, we want Bert. Yeah, no, we're on the air. Hang on. Say you do. Oh, he's so fired. Clay, you know what it's like to be the boy who cried wolf? Yeah, I imagine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you have nothing else to do, do you, Clay? Are you okay? Clay, you have a couple of minutes. You have a great laugh, Clay. I, I've heard that you've played it a few times. We have. Yeah, listen. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you funny, man. We should just loop that, have him laughing at himself. Right. You have a great laugh, especially when you're loopy and tired. I'm sure you're going to play it over and over. Oh, you know we will. Oh, will you? Of course we will. <laughs> Let's replace that one. That one. <laughs> Have a terrific show tonight. Good. All right, Clay, thank you so much. Hit, thank you, guys. Hit the hay. Okay.